All right, hopefully everything is good. Hope so you guys had a little bit of turbo time. Well, not turbo time, but Pegasus Prime time. We're now going to the World Science Center. We're not even waiting. That's right, we're already on our second area. You see, we have a problem already. We've been hit by something. We have to remove it. If you don't, you die. Uh oh. That's not good. Okay, so we gotta find a remedy before we do anything else in this time zone. Well, we got a compound analyzer. Don't mind me. All right. We can continue. All right. Now we said forward one step right here. Do I allow towards molecular synthesizer? All right. Completing download of molecular information from compound analyzer. Diamond hydronate is a relaxant commonly found in sleep and health aids. In combination with other drugs, its effects can be overpowering. For this reason, it is used as a base for many different forms of tranquilizers. All right. Yes, I would. Three thorazine-based molecules have been pre-programmed. These molecules are stable. All right. Base molecule number one. Now, oh, no, wait, that's the O, E, J, I, C, Y. Huh? Hmm. Hold on, I forgot the order. Oh, it's O J I D C Y. Base molecule number two. Let's do it right the second time. O. This is J I D C. Base Why? molecule number three. One more time. O J I D C Y. Three staple thorazine base molecules have been designed. Building base molecules. Bonding additional molecules. Synthesis complete. The synthesized compound will appear in the molecular synthesizer. The antidote has been administered. We are officially safe. Did you see how that worked? Hmm. 
is now 23. days after the implant of the biotech interface into the rat's cerebral cortex. Mm, this is good. There's less infection than even Dr. Sinclair had anticipated. signs of the interface protruding the tissue and as we've seen Algernon is getting along nicely with all of the other little rats it's amazing that someday even this technology might be used on human beings signs of any infection whatsoever. This rat's ready to rock. Let's consider this, Mercy. We'll get the cheese quicker than anyone. There are bits and pieces of overgrowth in tissue I assume in response to the implant, but it seems to be loose and easily discarded. These tests are similar to the tests we ran after two weeks and yet exponentially the rate of healing is happening accordingly. Anyone else grossed out by that? Yeah, it wasn't fun. We do have some stuff to look at. I had an interesting thought today while working on the contact-sensitive smart alloys project. It's given that all elements behave in a manner that is consistent with their atomic properties. For example, it is consistent for manganese to bond with barium cobalt in a very particular way under certain conditions. In a sense, these universal instruction sets are similar to the DNA which regulates the behavior of all cells in biological organisms. This being the case, it's conceivable that any non-organic matter can be programmed to respond at the molecular level to a set of predetermined instructions and instruction codes. So imagine a lamp which upon command could take the form of a chair, a table, or even a work of art. The possibilities are infinite. I'm confident that a proposal to do further research in this direction will be met with approval. Have you ever thought that we might just know something that we should by now? This month has been fraught with discoveries about the morphing process. We learned how to morph all of the elements, but only after we realized that a certain few of them are immutable, specifically the inert gases, like argon and krypton, well, because of their unique electrochemical properties, they simply are immutable. Even worse, these elements actually interfere with the bonding of surrounding molecules and bring the whole process to a halt. On the plus side, 
We have also discovered that if proper care is taken, even organic matter could foreseeably be altered in form. Hmm. This journal is, beyond a doubt, the most important of my career, as today marks my first success in the application of time distortion theory by creating a localized neutrino acceleration matrix, I was able to bend time for just a fraction of a second. Anything entering into the distortion field slipped back in time for just a moment, creating a visual effect similar to light refraction in water in a swimming pool. It may, it may not seem like much, but it's truly more than any physicist could hope to achieve in a lifetime. And while it may be eons before there's any practical application of this theory, everything great was achieved one small step at a time, and this is definitely the first step. After hearing these, I got one thing to say. That's our scumbag! We got him, Jack. We got him. I mean, look. We got Ares in his office. We just fought him. So we now know it was Elliot Sinclair. I thank you, Dr. Elliot Sinclair, for your views. He will take a short break now and return to hear from the distinguished Dr. Don't go to the auditorium. Thank you, gentlemen, for your attention. Also, I'm going to save here because it's a good idea. Because I'm supposed to be getting a pop-up if I'm getting close to people. I'm not getting it. Notice how well we're doing. But wait. I didn't show that we did zone attempts, huh? We only had the last one. Hmm. All right. Want to tell me something? You chicken. All right. See, that was supposed to happen when I was going that way. Let's see. This way. Why are you telling me I was going this way? See, now you're doing it. Now you're angering me. They got caught by Skiri there. Hmm. I'm stuck. You know what? It's time to change biochips. I used to know the route so I could do this without. Oh, wow. It was right here. Now I am going to say, get the maintenance, not the maintenance key, the, let's see, wire cutters ready. Here's the... You can cut this or you can cut... This is the electric that will kill him. But... Argon anti-fire system. Let's test it. Let's hit with an argon. Remember the smart alloy thing? Yeah. So you can kill him right there, or you can do the Gandhi. 
This one is okay. Central processor damage. You can do either one. Now, I highly recommend saving. Save it, save it, save it, save it. Save the game. We want that sheet. We need two chips from him. If we don't get both of them, we are in trouble. Because we got retinal. Retinal biochip is used for retinal scan based locks. Not having this will mess you up in the next zone. Shield biochip is basically almost needed. Protects the user from dangerous environments such as the ones that were on NORAD. Oh look, he left us a gift. A stun gun. We prevented the assassination, we are done here. Going home. Oof, I can feel my hands needing that one. So guess what happens now? We've completed two time zones. I know I've been a little quiet with this, but there's just been so much going on and so much exposition in that world that it was hard for me to actually gain words in. But yeah, if you remember the Pegasus Prime part of the playthrough when we looked at Castillo, I mean not Castillo, Sinclair. Yeah. He kind of let us know. It was him. We do have a biochip, to, well, uh, optical program information to look at, so let's look at that. Mercury. I'm sending you to a. Are you ready? Are you ready for the one thing that's probably going to give you the most information about our enemy in this game? Do you have the antidote that I told you to make a while back before you died? Let's go. Hi, loser. I'm expecting you too. Grab a donkey. Agent Five, you have just been shot with a dart coated with an unknown toxin. We know. We did this two episodes ago. Bye, access card. I don't need you anymore. Literally. Your bio suit. Well, you guys, shut up. We're in a pretty well. We've been over this. I don't need three messages from three or four messages from Beale saying we've been over this. See, I've already taken the antidote. We're good. We've had this conversation before. It's the timey-wimey stuff. And because I was a little bit of an idiot, I didn't get to show you this. Huh. Anything with an access card slot. Interesting. Now, we do have to do one thing in this room all over again. Dr. Sinclair, your messages have been forwarded to your office. Question for you guys. We got the Mars ro the Ares robot we just condemned here. His messages have just been forward forwarded to his office. We have Dr. Elliot Sinclair's key card in our hand. What do you guys think? I think he did it. Attendees must check in at the main reception in the auditorium complex. Thank Dr. you. Dr. Grayless is currently at the conference. Key card is required for entry. It's all right. 
Sorry about that, Arthur. You were saying something? It's locked. Talk about paranoid. There was a removed biochip that we get in Turbo. He's currently at the conference. Key Thank you. required for entry. His laboratory is open to authorized personnel only. But the thing is, in this version, we don't get that luck. Oh, by the way, do not go around the corner there. This laboratory is open to authorized personnel only. Dr. Elliot Sinclair is currently at the conference. Key card is required for entry. Well, I'll save that for after we're done. <laughs> Dr. Sullivan is currently at the conference. Key card is required for entry. This laboratory is open to authorized personnel only. Hmm. Dr. Washington is currently at the conference. Key card is required for entry. So, as you can tell, this laboratory is open to authorized personnel only. Dr. Hernandez is currently at the conference. Key card is required for entry. Everybody seems to be at this conference. This laboratory is open to authorized personnel only. So, yeah. If you were doing that, you don't have the achievement, you get peer review for that. If I got all of them. I don't know if I did. I don't need all of them, so... I've already gotten it. Dr. Elliot Sinclair is currently at the conference. Key card is required for entry. Well, I haven't beat Dr. Sinclair. Come on. There you go. See, I'm Dr. Elliot Sinclair! Snakes, snakes, and more snakes. He must have been really obsessed. Sorry, that lady. No, don't. I don't know why you zoom in on the snakes. Look at that. Huh. Ugh. Welcome to the symposium on alien contact at the World Science Center in Sydney, Australia. The primary purpose of this conference is to allow the scientific community a forum to exchange ideas and opinions about joining the symbiotry of peaceful beings. The primary debate will take place in the main auditorium complex on Wednesday at 9 o'clock with keynote speakers and world-renowned scientists Dr. Elliot Sinclair and Dr. Enrique Castillo. The debate will be followed by meetings and conference rooms where the many discussions revolving around this volatile issue will be held. Information on discussion groups will be available at the conference check-in at the entrance of the main auditorium. Accommodations are being provided at the new Sydney Metrocosmopolitan Hotel by the Shuttleport in New Darling Harbour. Thank you. Have a wonderful conference. How oh, nice. Holographic. Huh. Nice. The Tex Avery alarm clock. <laughs> Oh, huh, two messages. Hello, Elliot. This is Dr. White again. I still haven't received results from those morphing tests that I needed the other day. I know you're as excited about this breakthrough as I am. But if you expect to get any credit in the upcoming scientific journal, I'll need to see some practical work from you very soon. Give me a call. Did he let her take all the credit? Interesting. Hello, Elliot. This is Dr. Walczyk. I'm calling to check up on our progress after the neurotransmitter equalizer that I prescribed. I'm afraid that the stress you are under may be a bit much even for this increased dosage. But still take only two a day even if you are experiencing the anxiety attacks or rapid mood swings like we had last week. <laughs> but uh, I'm sure you'll be just fine. Oh, she's got some funny. Let's see if we can get one of the funnies. Hello, Elliot. This is Dr. Walczyk. I'm calling to warn you that your implant has been recalled. It has a problem that causes it to explode unexpectedly. <laughs> I, I hope I reached you in time. <coughs> <coughs> For once, I'm at a loss. <sighs> can I get the other one? Hello, Elliot. This is Dr. Walczyk. I'm calling to warn you that your implant has been recalled. 
It has a problem that causes it to explode unexpectedly. This could happen a few times. I, I reached you in time. <laughs> trying to get all the Easter eggs is a bit of a pain because this one. I'm trying to get her to do something. Unfortunately, they ever tell you that this game can get a little annoying with its Easter eggs? That there's a second one that I really want to see more, but to do that, it's completely random which one you get. So I'm trying to, you know. There it is! Yeah, I had to show someone getting their themselves broken on camera. Outtake. Any information we could find would really be helpful, Gage. E button. Biotech interface into the rat cerebral cortex. Hmm, this is good. There's less infection than even Dr. Sinclair had anticipated. Ah, uh, there are no signs of the interface protruding the tissue and as we've seen Algernon is getting along nicely with all of the other little rats it's amazing that someday even this technology might be used on human beings This rat's ready to rock. Let's consider this, Mercy. We'll get the cheese quicker than anyone. There are bits and pieces of overgrowth in tissue, I assume, in response to the implant. But it seems to be loose and easily discarded. These tests are similar to the tests we ran after two weeks, and yet exponentially the rate of healing is happening accordingly. Well, that was interesting, wasn't it? How was it? Yeah, I know that one was a bad one. This journal is, beyond a doubt, the most important of my career, as today marks my first success in the application of time distortion theory by creating a localized neutrino acceleration matrix and I was able to bend time for just a fraction of a second. Anything entering into the distortion field slipped back in time for just a moment, creating a visual effect similar to light refraction in water in a swimming pool. It may, it may not seem like much, but it's truly 
more than any physicist could hope to achieve in a lifetime. And while it may be eons before there's any practical application of this theory, everything great was achieved one small step at a time, and this is definitely the first step. Hmm. You finding something out about this yet? This month has been fraught with discoveries about the morphing process. We learned how to morph all of the elements, but only after we realized that a certain few of them are immutable. Specifically, the inert gases like argon and krypton, well, because of their unique electrochemical properties, they simply are immutable. Even worse, these elements actually interfere with the bonding of surrounding molecules and bring the whole process to a halt. On the plus side, we have also discovered that if proper care is taken, even organic matter could foreseeably be altered in form. Hmm. I had an interesting thought today while working on the contact-sensitive smart alloys project. It's given that all elements behave in a manner that is consistent with their oh. atomic properties. For example, it is consistent for manganese to bond with barium cobalt in a very particular way under certain conditions. In a sense, these universal instruction sets are similar to the DNA which regulates the behavior of all cells in biological organisms. This being the case, it's conceivable that any non-organic matter can be programmed to respond at the molecular level to a set of predetermined instructions and instruction codes. So imagine a lamp, which upon command could take the form of a chair, a table, or even a work of art. The possibilities are infinite. I'm confident that a proposal to do further research in this direction will be met with approval. Hmm. So not only does he take they not take care for some things, but look at all that's happened. I have to do something now. One of my favorite scenes, you know, it's a death. We don't need a nitrogen, don't worry. One question, Gage. Why? Agent 5, do not disturb the current environment and possibly the current time stream without extreme cause. Also, as a TSA agent, you are forbidden to carry lethal weapons under Protocol 37. But I was going to beat the ball, and I mean, all I was going to do is come over here and walk out. Oh, Dr. Sinclair! Say, why are you bringing your antique elephant gun out of your office? You're not Elliot! Security! Security! Don't shoot the man with the glasses! <laughs> <laughs> Don't shoot the man with the glasses! Oh, I love that. But you can see we are getting a score, you can see how well we're doing. Uh, I'm just gonna restore just because I'm cautious like that. Yeah, we're not gonna take the gun this time. Oh, Dr. Sinclair! Aren't you speaking at the conference right now? Wait a minute, if you were speaking at the conference, you wouldn't be here! <laughs> Sometimes I just think too much. Goodbye, Dr. Sinclair, and don't eat anything toxic now. If you can think of a funny line, please write to Presto Studios. Care of everyone involved, but no one who cares. Because unfortunately, Presto Studios is kind of gone, for what I know. But yeah, that was a cut line. Uh, eh. Now this thing here, it's not important, but if you needed it. Hmm, maybe we should try and get our bearings before we start searching around. You see where we are compared to, you know. Please report to conference check-in in auditorium complex. 
But because we're... Oh. This door appears to be lodged shut from the inside. With an added amount of leverage, this door may be pried open. I'd suggest using something from our inventory to pry the door open. Well, first of all, I'm going to switch to this biochip. We're going to need it. And I'll use a power crowbar. I hope everyone that's in Australia right now that watches, if any. I hope there's some. Are okay to the brush fire that's still going on? I know how chaotic it is. I haven't watched a monolith. I know how bad it's been, but... <sighs> I mean, it's been the news too, and I've been keeping an eye on it myself. Well, you guys are okay. We're not okay, though. Outgoing. Neener, neener, neener. Loser. Yeah, you can do this without the shield biochip. I mean, it's not too bad. Just take a little bit of health. Let me see what happens in here. Well, we're halfway there. Step forward once. Rhythms of life forms detected nearby. Extreme caution advised. See this? Let's watch. A little bit about our guy. Taking a short break while we prepare for our next speaker, Dr. Enrique Castillo, who will deliver a rebuttal to Dr. Sinclair's speech. Interesting. You're gonna say Arthur? Sorry, I cut you off again, buddy. Oh, shut up! Well, he's got a point. I'm sorry if you really can't hear. There is audio balance things about this game, as well as the whole series, but it's nothing you can really do about it. But yeah. Call it a hunch, but I don't. And yeah, we can't get in there. Hmm. This door is fine. But I think there's something. Ab 
this is a little hard to see. Yeah, that's why I got the light, Arthur. But yeah, can you believe it? For some reason, Dr. Elliot Sinclair really doesn't want these guys to visit. What did he do? Blow up his home or something? There's no way that could have happened, right? I mean, he's... Can't be that old. He's only as old as us. Oh, by the way, the reason why we went that way is because there's someone at the end of the hall that will bust you if you go that way. Okay. We're almost there. As he said, we're almost there. Now, I'm gonna say this. Prep your Argon. Trust me on this. Hey, nice door. Didn't I see Bob Vila make one of these? Agent 5. A strong... <laughs> yeah, I know. A strong temporal flux, whatever. Let's go in. Please welcome Dr. Enrique. One Argon canister. By the way, remember that video that mentioned Argon and Smart Alloy? Timber! Agent 5, recommend that you proceed with the removal of the robot's biochips before initiating auto recall. Oh man, the mercury's down. It must be cold outside. I think we better pick that up before there's nothing left of it. He's right. I want it here. Mapping. Retinal! Optical. We need the retinal biochip, we can now go to NORAD 4. We got Mercury's optical memory, which we'll listen to soon. And we can do toy. Bye, Nitrogen. Help me, Gage! I'm losing it! Interesting. So we resolved two. We got a new item, which we can actually carry, which is the stun gun. It fires a multi-barrel. It's a multi-barrel weapon that fires up both injection darts and plasma rounds. It's still loaded with darts containing a blue liquid, but the plasma chamber is empty because reasons. And we got this lovely number. This biochip is used solely for the purpose of, receive, of deceiving retinal scan systems. By projecting an image of a retina with a matching vein structure, the biochip is able to open any door with a retinal scan activated lock. We kind of needed it. You know, optical memory biochip, I never went over it, but storage device or optical data records a signal from any artificial optic source and plays back the recordings for review. Shield I never went over either, but this creates a hypersonic shield, a hypertonic shield, not hypersonic. I wish it was hypersonic, not shield around the user. This shield protects the user from dangerous environmental conditions and other physiological hazards. So yeah, we got most of the chips. This is all the chips in the game, by the way. I think I forget if there's an eighth one or not, but I'll remember soon. I want to say no because thinking about it. I think we get another mapping, another retinal, 
and another optical memory in the last zone. Which we'll handle on the next episode. I hope you guys had fun and I'll see you on the next one. See you then.